Welcome everybody to the Toku Portal Podcast. I'm Vashi V, and I'm here with... Rai. Decade. Drago. And today we're talking about Kamen Rider X8 episode 28. We open up at Getem Corp, where Graphite is ready to take his turn to have fun, but Prado says to leave it to him instead. Poppy shows concern about what they're planning, uh, but doesn't raise suspicion. Over at CR, Emu explains to Hiro about how he saw Poppy smile and how he thinks she's still good inside, but Hiro is skeptical of it. There's an emergency call. Over at Taiga Nico, Taiga ignores it in favor of hunting down Bugsters to defeat to beat Common Rider Chronicle. Nico tells him two Bugsters have been located, Salty and Arambara. Paradox is tormenting a ride player who realizes he's too strong. Emu and Hero show up and henshin into Exit and Brave. Exit takes on Paradox while Brave attempts to get the ride player to flee. Poppy shows up to enforce the rule about Kamen Riders helping the ride players and knocks Brave out of his henshin. The ride player attempts to fight Poppy himself, but she easily knocks him out as well, leaving a notable cut on his leg. Uh, before I continue with this, is there anything any of you have to say? One of the things I liked was um, before Taiga and Nico get the call, Tiger's just totally chilling on, I guess, the bed that Nico brought, and the whole room is just totally decked out with their stuff, and he's completely fine with that. I thought that was nice. And then I like seeing Emu finally getting sick of Parado's persistence. Um, I mean, two episodes ago, yeah, he fought him, but now that he's got bigger things to worry about and he's getting kind of sick of it, and that's pretty good build up for what happens later in the episode. I liked how the, uh, what do you call the egg said, but just slapping Parado around. <laughs> like, uh, basically he was, uh, Parado was a level 50 guy in RPG and uh, egg said was level 99. So it, it wasn't even a contest. Parado wasn't even, uh, Parado, he was just hammering down Parado for, uh, just shoving him aside just to concentrate on Poppy and Pariah was getting beat down so easily. That was a nice thing to see. Like, I I loved the scene in the Taiga's little hospital fort thingy. Because everything we've seen of Taiga is like, he's kind of like this hard ass. And then here, we, here he is chilling on a princess bed. It it was just great to see. And then, yeah, uh, X8 basically having none of Parado's shit this episode. Which was awesome. Yeah, Taiga and Nico are definitely living together now. Uh, X8 uh, starts ignoring Paradox to try reasoning with Poppy that she's not evil, uh, but Hero thinks it's futile. And Paradox becomes jealous that X8 is paying more attention to a negative bugster than him and tries to bully X8 into fighting him to no avail. X8 uses one of his finishers on Poppy. Similar to how he reprogrammed Dangerous Zombie, he attempts to reprogram Poppy back to the way she was before. Poppy does end up recognizing Emu, uh, but that's about as far as it goes. And then Parado comes in complaining that Emu isn't playing the game properly and that he needs to fight him more seriously. And then when Emu refuses, Parado forcibly takes Poppy with him when he leaves. They had a lover's quarrel. Drago? Uh, well, I <laughs> it, is, it is super funny. Parado sounds like the persistent ex of <laughs> Emu. Uh, other than that, yeah, uh, the reprogramming thing is kind of used as a dukes, uh, deuces machina or something, but I don't know, but they use it well in this episode. The way fucking X8 and Parado are in this episode is fantastic. He's, he does seem just like a jilted lover, you know, it's like just the, you're not paying attention to me anymore. And so I'm going to take my ball and go home. You know, the only problem is the ball is poppy. And yeah, I I have an issue with Emu's you know game genie power. I'm hoping that his I get he gets and may get a new form hopefully here soon that kind of you know stops him from using that power. I'm getting a little tired of it. Also, the entire time like Parado was bitching at Emu. The ride player is just writhing in pain in the background with Hero doing nothing to help him. Literally standing right there, paying more attention to the converse, to the argument than helping this injured guy. Yeah, it seemed like both Emu and Hiro kind of just blew this guy off. 
and he was kind of silly. And Emu, I can excuse, but Hero's literally standing right next to him. Yeah, he was more interested in the drama. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's just their way of making fun of that silly character. Some comic relief in this pretty serious episode. I, I can kind of understand why Hero kind of ignored him. I mean, he is, a, for lack of a better term, an internal medicine guy. You know, he's a surgeon. So, the, basically, aside from the Bugster virus, he had a cut on his leg. Seriously, what the hell is Hero? You know, Hero's probably mentality is, eh, it's a cut, dude. Quit being a wussy. It was still a long cut. The least he could have done was bandage the wound up. Take your fucking sleeve off if you have to. Uh, but moving on. At CR, Emu diagnoses the patient with Poppy's strain of gain syndrome, meaning that for him to be cured, Poppy will have to be defeated. Emu brings up his concern to Hero, who recognizes Poppy as the enemy now, saying a doctor's feelings shouldn't get in the way of their work. When Emu says that he wants to save Poppy as well, Hero reminds him that Poppy is a bugster who was born by causing someone to vanish. At Genom Corp, Poppy has what I can only describe as a nightmare about someone she doesn't know disappearing. Graphite explains it's the memory of the person she caused to vanish, and that even he has the memories of Hero's girlfriend, who he caused to vanish. Uh, that's interesting that they actually have the memories of those people, up to the point where they disappear. Yeah, it's kind of strange, because you would think that like the bugsters would somehow kind of reflect that, but they're just completely different beings with their own personality. So, yeah, I guess it'll be interesting to see how that's utilized in the future. Um, but another thing that I liked uh, is that brief moment when Hito's finally wondering, why is Parado so obsessed with fighting Emu? I mean, yeah, he's fought Taiga and Hito, but he's way more obsessed with fighting Emu, so he finally does some critical thinking and is not just worried about the operation, so that was good growth. And then Taiga gets a subtle, decent scene later on that I'll talk about. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, well, yeah, it, it was nice to see the Taiga like, realizing, uh, realizing that because like for a long time now, I, th- I guess they, it, it was high time they should have realized uh, they should have realized this why is Parado obsessed with Emu? Uh, not the answer, but like that's the question. Uh, well, yeah, that's about it. Like I, I like seeing that that little moment of recognition on, or rather, you know, piecing everything together in Hero for that just that split second of wait a minute. You know, it it seems like he may already have the answer himself, but you know, obviously not doesn't have the evidence to support it, but. That and the idea that all of these bugsters have the memories of the people that they basically were born from can end up being can it, it can either be really really good. Or I have a feeling it could end up being kind of damaging too. To where either they'll focus on it for one or two, like you know, currently we have Poppy and Graphite that we know for a fact have the memories and all that, and we can assume that the rest of them do. So they can either play on it like the, they are with Poppy, or they're just going to end up ignoring it, which I think would be a bigger problem myself. Uh, well, I, I don't think the other boxes have the memories because they are not reached perfect form yet. No, there, there's that possibility. I, I'm referring to, like, the ones who have human form. Obviously, you know, later on in the episode, you know, we Parado obviously knows where he comes from. I mean, he's always seemed to, to have had that knowledge especially with the way the, the course of this episode goes. Poppy gets it primarily, I guess, because her reprogramming un- gets undone. And then Graphite for, you know, him being in his perfect form. And so the my logic goes that uh, the new CEO does as well. Yeah, I guess so, too. Okay. Poppy uh, runs off to be alone, but Parado follows her to the rooftop where he basically tells her that humans hate the existence of Bugsters, so she should fight the humans. And this scene is super well done. Uh, that she can go more into detail about why. I'll let everybody give their thoughts, and then I'll, I'll give into it, and everybody can comment off that as well. Okay, well, hopefully we didn't think the same thing, and I'll steal your thunder. But uh, yeah, I really liked it, because you can really see why he needs 
Amagasaki. Because as smart as he is logically, he really does not understand emotions at all. And he completely fails at persuading Poppy. And he just talks about fighting and game rules. And then, and then he totally snaps. And it's probably not that he's even mad at Poppy. It's just because he's been rejected by Emma. So yeah, this is really a good scene. <laughs> the Murata choking Poppy scene was like one of the best things that comes out of this episode. I don't know. It's uh, either I'm being too sadistic, but yeah, it that, that's uh, that's that's one thing I like. But it it also feels like that Parado is also mad at Poppy because Emu is giving his attention to her instead of Parad himself, and that to vent out the frustration on Poppy, he might have just choked her. Yeah, and yeah. Other than that, yeah, Parado is a pretty sad character. Yeah, that's actually something I should mention. At what point Parado just grabs Poppy by the collar and leans her over the edge as he just stares her dead in the eye. All right. This scene was a little bit deeper than I guess uh, anybody else caught on. Um, The reason why I ended up picking on it is I have ADHD when I watch stuff, so I'm focusing on, like, everything from the camera angle to lighting and everything else with with, with the episodes. And there's a bit of symbolism in this episode based on everything that's happened so far. Because after he gets, Parado gets done choking Poppy, you know, over the ledge, he kind of tosses her off to the side. And it shows you the view from the top where Poppy is basically laying in a circle of light with Parado on the outside. And the symbolism basically is showing that, you know, basically the dichotomy of, you know, good and evil, because there's, they're essentially the same cre- same type of creature. But here you have Parado existing in darkness and Poppy finding her way back to the light. It was one of those very well done and very subtly done that I don't think a lot of people picked up on it. I certainly didn't. Like, when he was holding her over the ledge, it definitely had that evil shot of uh, Parado just being maniacal. But after he tossed her aside, I didn't even notice the circle of light that, uh, the uh, spotlight that Poppy fell into. Decade, Drago, anything? Uh, no, but that's a pretty interesting point. I mean, they have shown that, I mean, from last episode, we kind of got the same sort of thing with the game cabinet, but, uh, yeah, good job catching that. I wouldn't have thought of that as anything else. Like, I just, I did see the circle of light and Poppy on it, but... I didn't think much of it. Uh, I guess I I have to thank Bashi for pointing that out. Other than that, I have nothing to say. Okay. Uh, Taiga and Nico uh, cut to them. They've defeated the two Bugsters and this time collected the proof. Uh, Because the last time these two Bugsters were defeated, it wasn't, it was just by the Kamen Rider, so no proof. Uh, Nico checks if any other Bugsters have been spotted and learns that Poppy has been. Hiro has also gotten news of Poppy and tells Emu to watch him perform the operation. Poppy is watching some street performers dance by a river when a couple of Rai players show up to attack her. Nearly in tears about the harsh reality of her situation, Poppy hensions the fight. Like, you can see the desperation in her eyes that she doesn't want this. Yeah, again, that's uh, just goes to show how much power... Amagasaki had and convincing her to be this maniacal uh, kind of support character for the Kamen Rider Chronicle, but now that she's back to normal, you can see the inner struggle, especially I mean, it didn't seem like before, I guess before she didn't know that she had a human save data, like maybe Dan kind of hid that from her somehow, but now she knows and you can definitely tell it's weighing on her so yeah good acting uh yeah i the poppy watching dance scene in the in at the dog or something whatever whatever that place is uh was actually pretty nice because she's a boxer from dory with a beat and then that's a game about dancing and with it, well rhythm game but still uh that's what kind of thing that poppy would do in a pastime uh, other than that yeah and then she her getting brutally beat by the right players was also like, you know, her not wanting to fight uh, the right players and she just standing there tra- just transforming out of desperation to save herself. Yeah, I really like that scene. 
number one, I like the fact that we're still getting progress on the Bugsters and the use of Nico and all that for it, obviously. But the fact that we're not being forced to watch it with every episode, because, I mean, this would now be the third, at least the third, third or fourth time that we watched both of these, uh, Salty and the other guy get his ass kicked. So I'm glad they, they kind of just, like, glossed over it. With the scene with Poppy, it was, again, nice to see the, the, the struggle with, it, you know, with herself of, I'm, I'm a bugster, so I should hate the humans, but not wanting to hate them because she's good. So when the writer players show up and start kicking her ass, the the struggle she had to transform for it was literally just came down to life or death for her. It, she literally transformed just so she wouldn't die. And it was nice to see that struggle in her, even when at, it, which carries over even after she's transformed because she still doesn't fight back. She like dodges and blocks and that's about it. Nico and Snipe show up. Uh... Nico takes a charge in fighting Puppy while Snipe scares the riot players away. Uh, it's pretty easy when you have big guns. Uh, x and Brave show up, but Paradox also shows up, not willing to ha- let x have fun with another bugster. Brave leads Paradox to x so he can join in the fight against Puppy, who is not only overpowered, but is also hardly fighting back. Puppy is knocked out of her henshin and looks at the riders with fear. Uh, who wa- who was it amongst them that actually, like, when they're looking at her, says, Sorry, Poppy? Uh, I think that was Hiro. Yeah, it was Hiro. He basically says, says no hard feelings. Which, you know, was pointing out that Hiro doesn't really want to do it, but has to. Except, uh, because if you don't remember, he has the big robot suit for his ultimate form right now. He uh, leaves the robot suit to, uh, which holds Paradox back while he jumps in and stops the other riders from finishing Poppy off. Uh, they all try to convince x that for the patient's sake, they need to defeat Poppy, but x refuses to budge. Poppy begins crying as she says to just finish her off. Because of her birth, someone died. Humans hate the existence of Bugsters. Humans and Bugsters are enemies. x realizes what she's saying, undoes his henshin, and provokes her to attack him, going as far as to put her weapon in her hand and hold it against his chest. But Poppy throws it aside instead. She doesn't want to fight, she just wants to play do re mi fa beat happily with everyone. And Mu comforts her and she smiles. The game cleared announcement is made and the patient infected with Poppy's game syndrome is cured. Can I just say that I'm pretty sure this is the first time they've acknowledged... Uh, the Bugsters actually cause people to die. I think before this, they only ever said vanish or disappear. I think this is the first time the word death has actually been used to describe that incident. Uh, yeah, you could be right. I'm not sure if... Yeah, yeah, I think they even said disappeared during the health ministry press conference. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I liked was... Um, I mean, of course, the scene was good. Good feels. Good uh character development of emu being so serious and stuff and resolving the problem but um yeah one of the things i liked was nico asks like how did the game get cleared i mean we didn't even beat her up and like says oh well it's because we made her smile <laughs> it was hey, like such a redeeming like, moment just like bergamon with juju burger yeah exactly he, he finally redeemed himself for shooting all those burger ingredients uh, in the, that was actually one of my, this is one of the most well accurate episode of x Uh, I, I really like the inner conflict between Poppy that she was having and then x just the ancient and saying, kill me, <laughs> kill me, do it. <laughs> uh, that, that was, uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, other than that, yeah, it was a very heartfelt episode and the game clearing, it makes sense because Poppy is a buckster from Doremi for Beat, which is an arcade game where you have to dance and make Poppy smile. Yeah, so in that rhythm game, that's the goal of the games. So it's not necessarily yeah, you have to fight and beat her. It is, uh, so smiling and uh, defeating the buckster is, uh, making the buckster smile and then uh, the game getting cleared was pretty good. All... <laughs> Uh, also, the robot holding on Parada Hemu just escapes from there. That was also funny because 
Emu has literally in this episode has none of whatever parad shit that he's doing. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, I'm done. For me, it's like I I liked where because you know Parado was kind of you know holding Emu back the whole time. And he basically went, "Oh yeah, wait, I'm in a giant robot suit. Hey, robot suit, hold Parado. I'm jumping out." Um, to get in the way of the blast, it was that was a nice touch and a nice callback to the fact that he can actually do that. And then with Poppy going, you know, just kill me. I've taken you know a human's life. Showed. You know, especially to Emma, obviously, with the way he handled everything, that she was back to being Poppy, you know, and she wasn't bad anymore, so, you know, I'm going to save her. So the easiest way for him to do that and get get it across to Poppy was to, un, you know, unhinge and take a driver belt and shove it against him and basically go, fine, fight me, kill me, you know, if you're a bugster and all that, then do what you're designed to do. Otherwise, shut the hell up. <laughs> to me, that's basically what it was, was either kill me or, you know, just shut up and let's go back to being, you know, back to the way everything was. Which, you know, caused her to smile, beat the game, and it, it was a nice little touch. And it's one of the few scenes with um, Emu where you get that amount of emotion, emotion out of him. We've had it a few times, especially with... Um, Bergamot, when Bergamon got killed, you know, and all that. It's like, there there have been very few episodes where he's shown that depth of emotion, and it was nice to see, because a lot of the emotion he's shown throughout this series was, you know, sadness for, you know, when Kitty died, and then just anger at um, Dan. So it was nice to see that it can, it was more than just, you know, your standard oh, I'm going to be angry about it. It was, no, it was that righteous fire of just come on. Let, you know, it was nice to see. And uh, this is kind of showing that, you know, that whole speech that Parado made about humans and bugsters being enemies, maybe he's the only one who thinks so. I mean, Graphite probably also thinks so, but we don't truly know what the other bugsters think, are thinking. Maybe they're just following their orders. Just, who knows? Parado confronts Emu about why he'll play games with others, but not him. Emu explains it's because Poppy doesn't kill humans. And then Parado legit asks, aren't we friends? Uh, which Taiga had no qualms with saying no. Uh, Parado explains that he and Emu are fated to fight because Emu is him. He then merges himself into Emu's body, possessing him. Episode end. This, uh, yeah, the the relationship between Prado and Emu this episode is like an abusive relationship where Emu is just trying to get away and Prado just keeps trying to bully him back in. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because it seems like before, I mean, I guess we'll find out next episode, but before. For the most part, Emu's bugster side kind of helped him to, you know, unify the other three writers for Dragonite Hunter and, you know, make Mighty Brothers. Uh, so that's, it. I'm looking forward to seeing how the heck that's going to be explained. But uh, I, I really liked how they totally, like, baited the audience with the sappy Sentai trope of, like, the camera panning out and everyone's just all walking back to their base or whatever and... Nico starts chasing Poppy. That was a really good bait. I loved it. Uh, that was for good, yeah. Yeah, the, that that was the ending scene is really good. Uh, but I have a the thing about Parado say, saying that and getting inside the uh, emu actually was, was pretty na- nice to see. Uh, also, I don't think that I think Para M isn't. Emu's buckster side, it just maybe like they have a multiple personality disorder. Emu has a multiple personality disorder, and the buckster side is just more. And then it just they can just switch between these two when he is playing games. And Parado is just taking uh, Parado is just the creation from his M M's creation. That's why he refers Emu as M because it's uh, because M side of uh, Emu is the guy who created Parado. That, at least that's what I feel. I feel that both M and Emu are the same people. Uh, just they have multiple personalities, and M isn't Emu's buckster, which Prado is. Uh, and also the fact that Prado just uh, straight uh, the hero was just about to 
shove Emu to the side, like uh, go run away. You don't realize this uh, very quickly. Um, that was, that was something I liked because as a surgeon, I guess you you have to be really observant about uh, the things. So that was a pretty n- nice thing that they did at the end. <laughs> also, the thing that that uh, scene came out of nowhere, and I wasn't expecting it. I loved the like like the Kate said the the Sentai bait trope of everybody running off. Hey, everything is all good, and then bloom! Here comes Parada to kill it. That that was a nice touch. Um, when it comes to Parado himself, based on every all the evidence that we have gathered so far, I fucking called it from from the get go with his unhealthy obsession with fighting M. I figured that Emu and Parado were essentially like the same creation, you know, but that he created was created from Emu in some some manner. It so I like the fact that I was able to, for lack of a better term, call that. I'm still not sure how it ties into M and Emu. Well, the the way Drago said it, it, it makes sense, but we, then you get the the issue with the preview. So here's my question: uh, Any time that Emu used Mighty Brothers, uh, was Parado around? Yeah, he was. He 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 has been around. Here's here's my thought on it. Because, you know, with the preview, it basically seems that, you know, Parado took over whichever other one is not the real version of Emu, because we still haven't gotten that discussion completed yet. I think that the bugster virus that's still in Emu is still basically the Parado save data. Oh, that would make sense. Because it, it was, like, because... I think that Parado being the, for lack of a better term, the original bugster from everything that we've been get ever information we've been given, because with Parado being Emu's bugster, which that was pretty much confirmed this episode, he is patient zero. That makes Parado the original bugster, the first one that appeared in Dan's computer when Y2K happened. So that makes him the original, so it would make sense, and since this was all done on, for lack of a better term, an incomplete basis of what Dana ended up creating with the rest of the Bugsters, it would make sense that there would be some residual effect on M, or on Emu, which would be, therefore, be the Emu, or the M personality, which gets, you know, the basically his Bugster comes out. So I think it's the version of it's his save data that's not complete so that's why it helped him with his ability to create everything why it helps him fight in mighty brothers double x so it would it that would explain all of that so and and then so forth in the next episode which has a preview of basically his mighty brothers forms fighting this would also explain why uh brave couldn't get the bugster to appear out of emu when he tried to uh, a while back uh, when he tried to perform the uh, removal operation because parado was already out somewhere else right and if anybody who plays video games know you can't load two save datas at the same time you know it's like you can't play two versions of the game at the exact same time it, it you you can't do that it's you have so you basically, for lack of a better term, using gamer ter- gamer terminology, the Parado that exists is essentially save file one, which is at level fifty. Whereas the save data file that's in Emu would be save file number two, that's at level three, for lack of a better term, which would explain why it wouldn't fully form because Parado's already there. There's already a save file loaded. The game is already being played. Right. So that's that would be, to me, the best explanation for why that happened. And it does make the most sense with the whole, you know, video game theme. Uh, personally, I don't still, I still don't think that M, M is a Buckster side per se. It's unlike, uh, like it's a split personality of Emu because Emu, before the Buckster virus, M, M also used to be, Emu used to be good at games too because he sent Dan the idea before he encountered the Buckster virus. Uh, and also many a times where the people who make games are also good at playing games. I mean, like the people who work on games do the designs and everything. Uh, so I, I doubt M is the Buckster side, but just, uh, I still think that he's a split personality 
rather than the Buxta side. First off, making a game and playing a game are two different skills. Uh, second off, explain the red glowing eyes. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of hard to explain. Or maybe like they're just switching personality. That's how maybe like the M side has been more taken over by the Buxter. Well, what we're saying is that the M side is the Buxter. Well, okay. From the preview, it seems like um, Emu is the M side, and Parado is the blue side that says Boku. So yeah, I have no idea. That's why I kind of just gave up <laughs> coming up with theories because we're really not gonna know until Sunday. Any other final thoughts? Uh, can't wait for the next episode. That's my final thought. Oh, I with, with the slight little spoilers that I won't get into that Rai had found. I cannot wait for the next episode. <laughs> oh, if you, you can see that in the next episode preview if you watch it. It, yeah, uh, it, this it, is gonna it, be good. It did, it did pop up in in the preview. Yes, it did. Yeah, I kind of skipped most of the preview then. <laughs> I, I saw enough to see Parado and X8 fighting in my the Mighty Brothers form, and then I kind of clicked off out of it. Oh, you, then you clicked off right before I showed it. Spoiler warning for anybody who has not watched that part of the the preview: Parado gets a new form, and it's awesome. It is glorious. We're not worthy. It's kind of a bummer that I spoiled the uh, uh, the jingle from playing around with the flash belt, but oh well, it's still pretty awesome. Oh, uh, we haven't done that. We only saw what it looks like. Uh, I guess that about wraps this uh, podcast up. Thank you for joining us, everyone, and we will see you next time. Yep, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for listening again. Bye. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys when the next episode comes out.